I had a, the message I want to share with you today actually came to me while I was uh, at that place where you're sleeping, but you're not sleeping. It was early in the morning, and I heard this, and I believe that the Lord was speaking this to me about learning to hear him. I think it's important that we learn to hear the voice of God, don't you? I, I think sometimes that what happens is there's so many other voices in our life that it can be a challenge, right? Maybe, maybe we can illustrate it uh, today. Let's see how this goes. Welcome to my world, right? I mean, that's, how many of you have ever felt that? It's just like, you know, you're, you're trying to focus, you're trying to hear, but there's so much chaos, so much confusion, and, and, and so many other voices around you that it seems to drown out your ability to hear. I think it's important for us, you know, I thought about how that a, uh, when, a lady's expecting and by the way congratulations Jason and uh, I thought about they got a brand new baby with them today and I, I thought about how when a can I borrow you a second honey yeah act like you're expecting so you ever see yeah so when when a, <laughs> when a lady's expecting a lot of times what you'll see is the the husband or the the daddy talking to the child do you ever see that that literally before the child ever comes into this world the father is speaking to the child hey darling hey baby daddy loves you see that baby's in a quiet place and so when you speak to that child, there are no distractions. And you're trying to make sure that when that child comes into this world, when he's born or she's born, that she comes into a place that's already welcoming her. Thank you. God wants us to experience that. I can tell you long before I ever had a new birth, I heard that voice, not an audible voice speaking to me, but one tugging on my heart. I didn't recognize it, didn't understand it because I didn't know him. Reminded me of a place in scripture and so what I want to preach to you for just a little while this morning is from this topic a quiet place everybody say it with me a quiet place I thought how that sometimes it can get so so noisy around us that we just look for that quiet place how many of you ever had children you know what I'm talking about just long for that quiet place. You know, before, I, I was sharing in the first service before, uh, you know, Debbie and I were dating, not before we were dating, but while we were dating, I had never really been around a bunch of children. I was the youngest in my family, and even all my cousins, most of my cousins anyway, were older than I was, so I'd never been around that. And then I remember, you know, going to her house, you know, going to be introduced and they had kids coming out of lamp posts man they <clears throat> I never saw so many babies in all my life I think they had a patent on them or something but they the, and and so all these little girls and boys running around in diapers going ah, she put my hair on. <clears throat> if 
you ever been through shock therapy? <clears throat> That's what I felt like I was experiencing. I went in there and all that was going on and I'm, you know, just like, I come out of there, I felt like I needed, ther I, thought, I felt like I needed some counseling or something. I was just, I mean, frazzled. Anybody ever been there? And then all of a sudden I realized later on in I didn't even know when it happened, but I, I got inoculated. You know, I, I, I'd been around that and, and started staying around that. And then the next thing I know, when we were traveling, you know, we were in someone's house and they had kids bouncing off the wall and they, I'm so sorry about our child. Oh, I'm, I'm used to it. Just normal. When you find a new normal, right? And so I thought about how that sometimes we get so acquainted with the noise around us that it becomes hard for us to find a quiet place you ever met somebody that had to be doing something all the time point to him right now <laughs> De debbie's dad used to i i i when i first started going to the family I'd, I had, I'd go into the living room and I'd be like standing there and I'd be doing this and not even realize I was doing it. He'd look at me and say, man, son, why don't you shut your motor off? He said, just, just relax, just shut the motor off. And I looked at him, I said, I'm afraid if I shut it off, I may not get it started again. I just, you know, I'm, I'm just so used to, you know, being on the go. And even today, if I'm, if I'm, being honest with you, and I, I am being honest with you, by the way, but even, even today, I, I have a problem just sitting at the house, you know, in the daytime. I mean, you know, at night, the family's over, you know, everything's good, but like in the middle of the day, I feel, I, I'll never forget, I went on a, I, I was doing mission work in Honduras, and one of the hardest things were me, for me was I, we'd, we'd shipped a medical supply over there, like close to $2 million worth of medical supplies, and I was waiting for, to meet with a government official at the hotel, and I'm thinking, man, I'm in that hotel. <laughs> I got to go find somebody to preach to. I'm about to go nuts. And, it, you know, just, just because, and, and literally, the people that were with me were kicked back, you know, relaxed, sipping iced tea, and, you know, singing a kuda matata, you know, and all that stuff. And it's like, and I'm thinking, what is going on? I'm, I'm, I'm about to, and they, you know, I remember them looking at me and say, you, you just need to learn how to relax. Everybody say, find your quiet place. I want to read a passage to you from 1 Samuel, the third chapter. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel. Everybody say, called him. And he said, here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call you. Go lay down again. And he went and he laid down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel rose, went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. He answered, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, so he rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Therefore, and it says, And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be if he calls you. Everybody say if. If he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood. Everybody say stood. And called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. Samuel did not recognize the voice of God because God had never yet spoke to him. The scripture said that Samuel did not yet know the Lord. He hadn't developed a relationship with God. And it said he didn't, he didn't know the word of the Lord. What that phrase means is that he didn't know God's voice. God had never spoke to him yet. 
I wonder if you remember the first time God tried to speak to you. See, it's hard to recognize a voice you're not familiar with. And so something is about to happen. If you studied prior to what I just read you, there had been a prophet of God that had gone to Eli and said, you're getting ready to have the priesthood ripped from your family because you honor your sons more than you honor me. He said, the, the sacrifice that's supposed to be holy, you, you, you and your sons have become fat off of it. They, they, were, doing, they, they were treating it contemptible. They, they were not honoring God. And God said, look, he said, I swore to your ancestors that, you know, the priesthood would be yours forever. He said, but I'm going to honor those that honor me. And he said, in those that don't honor me, he said, I, I'll, I'll give it to another. I'm, I'm not going to have this. While that's going on, there's a little boy that has come to the temple, and he's working for God, but he doesn't know God yet. You remember that? I remember wanting to work for God so bad. I, I had just surrendered. I didn't really know God. I'd surrendered my life to God, and I wanted so desperately to do something for God. I went to the church, and I said, could I be the janitor? My brother looked at me and said, are you kidding? He knew what my room looked like. I said, I, I said just, I, I, I want to do something. Just let me mop the floor and and they let me do it and I, I would go on a Saturday he would drop me off and I'd grab that mop and I'd start mopping that linoleum you know and and that shows you how old that was and I, I started mopping it and just singing the song Jesus use me please don't refuse me surely there's a work I can do and even though it's humble Lord help my will to crumble for though the cost be great I'll work for you I desperately wanted to do something for God here is a boy that was given by promise his mama had prayed for him. How many of you mamas prayed for your children? Do you understand that you may not even recognize it and you're a child of promise? And, 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 and so he, he, he's there and he's going through all the motions. He's, he's doing all the work for God, but he doesn't know God yet. There are churches across the world that are filled with people that are working for God, but they don't know his voice yet. Eli perceived that God was trying to speak to Samuel. Samuel can hear him, but he doesn't recognize him. I want you to think about what's going through this boy's head. All of a sudden, Samuel, and he jumps up and he runs in. I mean, it's obviously got to be Eli, and he runs in. What is it, Eli? And he said, son, go. I, I didn't call you. Go lay down. And he's thinking, man, I must have been dreaming or something. And he's back down on the bed, and then all of a sudden, Samuel, he jumps up and he goes, he said, Eli, I'm, I'm here. I heard you call me. He said, I didn't call you. Go lay down again. He's got to be going back going, man, what, is he playing games with me? I know I heard him call my name. What is this? You know, is this initiation into the priesthood or something? You know, I know I heard him call my name. And then the third time, he said, Samuel, he goes back and he goes in. And now he's getting a little frustrated. He said, here I am, Eli, for you did call me. Read it. This time he says, you did call me. He's saying, I know I heard someone call my name. And Eli picks up on it. And he recognizes God is preparing that boy. And he said, go lay back down, Samuel, and if, everybody say it with me, if he speaks to you again. I want you to get this this morning because you don't have a promise that he'll speak 
to you again if you turn him away. See, Samuel doesn't recognize who's talking to him. But when we know who's talking to us and we push him out, we don't know if he'll speak again. How many of you are thankful for mercy? And he said, if he speaks, you call out this time and say, speak, Lord, because your servant hears. Let him know that you know who he is now, that, that you understand. And so he goes back, and I, th this is so powerful to me because God, this shows how determined God is to get to you, that you, you don't lose track of it, that you don't lose sight of it, but that he's going to show himself real to you. And this time the Scripture says, watch this. If you look at the Scripture, he's spoken to Samuel all these other times, but this time he comes in and he stands. Everybody say, God stood. You ever been there before where all of a sudden you knew you were standing in the presence of God? God stood and he called out, Samuel, Samuel. He calls his name out twice. Hear me. God had to get that boy in a quiet place because he began to reveal to him things that were getting ready to transpire. And he said, Samuel, I'm going to use you, and I need you to be ready for what's coming. Hear the word of the Lord. God is speaking to the church. I'm getting re I want you to be ready for what's coming because I'm going to use you in a way I've never used you before. Samuel had never heard God before. Many of us in here, God is getting ready to speak. Speak to us in a way that we've never heard him before. Everyone say a quiet place. Sometimes you've got to be able to shut the noise out. You've got to get away from the noise in that quiet place. Elijah has prayed and he said there's not going to be rain for three and a half years and there isn't any. Then all of a sudden, and he shows up, and man, there is chaos and confusion going on because Israel's divided. They're not serving God. And the Lord speaks to Elijah, and he, he comes out from that three and a half years of being in a quiet place because when you get in a quiet place, God prepares you for war. He comes out of there, and he confronts 850 false prophets. 450 prophets of Baal, 400 prophets of Asherah, and he brings them together, and he said, now look, he said, we need to figure this thing out. He said, if, you, if, if, if Baal is God, then serve him, but if Jehovah is God, then serve him. So let the God that answers by fire be Lord of all. And all the people said, it's well spoken. So all those prophets gather up, they build an altar, they offer up a bull, they put it on the altar, they pile wood on it, and then they go at it. Chaos and confusion everywhere. They start screaming and crying out loud, nothing's happening. They start jumping up and down on the altar, dancing around on the altar, nothing's happening. They take knives and start cutting their arms. The Bible says that their blood gushed out on that altar. Nothing happened. Everybody go, nada. Zip. Not so much as a spark. Nothing happened. All the chaos, all the confusion, all the screaming, all the yelling. There was no God in Baal. Then Elijah stepped up. He got 12 stones that represented the sons of Israel. He took those 12 stones and he repaired the altar that they had forsaken, the altar of God. He put the bull on it. He piled wood on top of it. He dug a trench around it. Then they poured 12 big jars full of water just on top of that so the wood is drenched, the bull's drenched, the, 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 the ditch that he dug around it is full of water. Watch this. He doesn't start screaming. He doesn't start jumping up and down trying to get God's attention. He's not cutting himself, but he enters a quiet place with God. 
he goes in and he begins to speak to God and he said, Lord, he said, let them see that you've called me and you've ordered me to do this. And all of a sudden, man, fire erupts out of the sky, comes down, hits that altar. It burns up all the wood. It burnt up the bull. It burnt up all the water. There's no water in the ditch. And it burnt the rocks. There are no rocks left. Do you realize how hot that had to be? Everybody say, a great victory. Do you ever have one? Do you ever have God do something for you, made you feel like Superman? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? I, honestly, come on, let's be real with each other. You ever been in the presence of God where it was so strong and it was so real, you felt like, I feel like I could leap off of a tall building. Don't do it. <laughs> he leaves that place. Ahab runs and tells Je Jezebel, his wife, what happened. So the king of Israel runs and tells the queen what took place. And Jezebel sends a message to Elijah and said, I'm going to kill you before the day's up. And he runs. Everybody say he ran. He got sucked back in to the chaos and the confusion. He had just... He had just stood down 850 prophets in one, and now he allows one lone voice to suck him into a confused state, and he takes off running. Hear what I'm saying today, that the world we live in is in a confused state. There is chaos around us, and God is trying to get our attention and tell us, don't let the chaos put you on the run you got to know how to stand and know that I'm God so Elijah goes from that place and he winds up in a cave everybody say a quiet place and when he got in that cave God spoke to him first Kings 19 and 9 and there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place and behold the word of the Lord came to him and said what are you doing here, Elijah? Everybody say, what are, you, what are you doing here? What? Did, did you just run? Did, did, did you not remember what I just did up on Mount Carmel? Were you not there when the fire fell? I was pretty sure that was you calling on me. I consumed that. Did I? What are you doing here? Have you ever asked yourself that question? What am I doing here? It's so all of a sudden, man, all the voices, the noise in this world that brings confusion and chaos into your life that tries to distract you from the voice of God because the devil knows that when you get focused in on his voice, everything changes. So God has to teach Elijah something. He has to teach Elijah that the noisiest voice in the room isn't always the one you ought to be listening to. And so he takes him back up into a cave. He gets up back at, I believe he said Herman, and he goes in and, and he, he goes inside that cave. Let me just share the story with you. And then he tells him, he says, now, st come, come out of the cave. He steps out of the cave onto the mountain, and he's on that mountain, and all of a sudden, a tornado. How many of you ever been in one? Man, I had one chasing me. It's a true story. Coming across the field, I looked up and saw it. I'm like, oh, God. The tornado comes through that mountain. It's bursting rocks to pieces. It's tearing them up. But God's not in it. Now, hear what I'm getting ready to say. God sent it, but he wasn't in it. Now, stay with me. According to Scripture, there's some things that have got to happen. God's sending it, but he ain't in it. 
You understand what I'm talking about? He's not in the confusion that's in this world right now. He may have sent it. He may be saying, okay, it's coming through. He's trying to teach Elijah something. He sends that tornado. He sends an earthquake, and the earthquake is shaking everything up. He sends fire, and the fireman's just blazing around him, but he's not in it. I want you to get this. He's teaching Elijah that all the chaos that's surrounding you cannot touch you. He stands on that mountain. A tornado is ripping rocks apart around him, but it can't touch him. He sends an earthquake, and it's shaking everything around him, but it's not shaking him. He sends fire, and it's consuming everything around him, but it is not consuming him. And then all of a sudden, after all the chaos passes, God whispers, Elijah, you want to get somebody's attention? Whisper, Elijah, what are you doing here? Why are you letting the confusion and the chaos cause you to run? Son, I'm not done with you yet. You get up from this place and you go anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. You go anoint Jehu to be king over Israel. And you go anoint Elisha to be prophet in your stead. But son, get this out of your mind. Get this chaos out of your spirit and understand that I am who I said I am. He said, I am the self-existent one. I am Jehovah. Nobody props me up. Nobody's got to support me. I am who I am. Everybody say the noise. I think about how sometimes we just need to find our quiet place. When you can find your quiet place, you'll hear from God. Just ask Jesus. Did you ever notice that Jesus is the Son of God? He's not half God and half man. He's fully God and fully man. People say, well, how's that work out? I always tell people this. I said, look, take a trip with me. We're standing in front of the ocean. Now, you've got a glass in your hand, right? Look out in front of you. What do you see? You see the ocean, right? Now, take the glass and dip it down in. What's in the glass? What is in the glass is 100% ocean. Look out in front of you. You haven't depleted the supply. God is in Christ reconciling the world to himself while he still fills all of heaven. Our mistake is we try and make God a man, and God is not a man. He's an omnipresent spirit. So he's able to fill all space at all times. And Jesus, while he's here, if you study his life, you find him consistently slipping away to be in a quiet place. He even sends his disciples, I, I need to get alone here for a minute. I need to be alone. And then he goes to Gethsemane before all the chaos starts, before all the confusion before all the screaming and yelling, crucify him. And he gets quiet before God. I don't like where I'm at right now, God. If there's any way, I don't want to go through this. It ought to strengthen you to know that Jesus prayed a prayer like that. Because how many times have we prayed a prayer like that? But the conclusion of it was, but not my will, your will be done. 
and somewhere, somewhere in the middle of his praying and, 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 and the anxiety that he was feeling and the confusion and the chaos that was trying to grip his heart and, and, and he sweats until the sweat comes as great drops of blood. He experiences a physical trauma in his body. Capillaries in his blood system begin to rupture and he secretes blood through the sweat glands of his body. But when he comes up off of that rock, he said, let's go. What's he saying? He said, I'm ready now. I've been in a quiet place. I'm ready to do battle. And they come out with a legion of soldiers, with at least 600 soldiers, and they say, who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I am. I am. And he laid that entire army flat on their back. Make my day. Do you understand what's going on? He's saying, you need to understand, you're not arresting me. I'm giving myself up to you. You need to understand something. You're not taking my, my life away from me. I'm laying it down, and I'm going to pick it back up because I got a promise from my Father. I've been in my quiet place, and you can't move me anymore. When we get to that quiet place, Psalm 62 and 1 and 2, David says, I wait quietly before God, for my victory comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, where I will never be shaken. Wow. Quiet place. When all of a sudden you step out and you know you've been in the presence of a living God. We all need a quiet place. For some of you, it may be a closet. Could be sitting on the porch watching the sunrise, sitting beside a fire at night under a starlit sky. It's just a place where you can get quiet and listen. It's not a substitute for prayer, but rather an accessory to it. Because when you're praying, you're talking. But there comes a moment when you just need to get quiet so you can listen. I was laying in bed in a revival. I was in Louisiana preaching a revival, laying in bed. And early one morning, I heard someone calling my name. I jumped up, got my clothes on. Man, I thought somebody was at the door hollering at me. And I walked in there, and there was no one there. The first time that it happened to me had been years earlier. We were married, and I heard someone calling my name, and I thought, God, what's going on? And when I heard them calling my name, it ended up leading me to a message. Your phone's ringing. I ended up going in the Scripture and found that when Paul is on the road to Damascus, and he, he makes a statement, he said that there were men with me, and a light shone out of heaven, and, and they heard the voice, but they didn't see anyone. And then later on in Acts, it says that they heard not the voice, but I heard the voice. And how many of you know that the Bible doesn't contradict itself? So I had to find out what does this word voice, what, what's it come from, what's it mean? When I looked it up, I found out that the word voice is a Greek word, phone. It's where we get our word telephone from. And it means the sound or noise. So what was going on is the people with Paul heard his phone ringing, but Paul got a person-to-person -person call with Jesus. How many of you know that he's still able to give you person-to-person? -person? Now, hear what I'm going to tell you. God, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I was, I was in the middle of 
of sleep early in the morning when God started speaking this to me. And I, I sat there and I meditated on it and I got up and I thought, okay, God, I've got to write this down. I wrote this stuff down before I ever went golfing the other day. I, I wrote this stuff down and I thought, I've got, to, I've got to dig this out because God's trying to say something. And then it started coming together to me. Rick, I need you to let my people know that we are entering into a place of chaos and confusion. But I want them to get a quiet place in their heart with me. I want them to get alone with me because when you get alone with God, all the confusion in the world cannot rob you of his voice. All the everything that's going, all the chaos that breaks out around you cannot keep you from his presence when you go, when you know his voice. Would you stand with me today? When's the last time you just went outside and sat down by a fire? looked up in the sky and just started meditating on God. Nobody talking to you. I don't even have my cell phone out. (laughs) Just all quiet. You'll be surprised what you hear. Let me share something with you. Because sometimes people say, well, I just can't hear from God. Samuel did not yet know the voice of the Lord. You see, you have to understand that God doesn't always speak to you in an audible voice. The only time other than the two times I talked about where I was in sleep and I I heard somebody calling me time, the only time I was awake and I heard the voice of God was when he called my name. And I shared with you, he did that to save my life. I'd fallen asleep in a car or truck and I was headed to a utility pole when I heard Rick. And when I opened my eyes, I saw the pole and veered back over and then looked beside me to find out who had crawled in the truck with me. God knows where you're at. He knows what you're going through, and he wants to give you direction on how to get through. But there are other times in my life, and the majority of my life, where I've experienced God's voice another way. Heavenly nudges, unctions of the Spirit in a quiet place and all of a sudden it's like a voice begins to fill my mind that I'm not hearing with my ear but I'm sensing with my heart how can you know just like Samuel did you may make a mistake at first and think somebody else is talking to you But it's really important that you not get those voices confused because God wants to lead you to a place of victory. How many of you in this place today could say, God, I need to hear your voice? You know what I'm talking about? I mean, not just for the sake of, and I know, you know, there are people, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not disparaging anyone that talks about how that they have a conversation going on with God all day long. That's just never happened for me. You know, I've heard people say, well, yeah, I, you know, I was having a conversation with the Lord, and he told me, you know, and I'm thinking, man, that'd be neat. But if I'm going to be transparent and real, I've never, I've had conversations with God, but not, not like Moses did. Not when God was speaking to me audibly, but there are many times that I've had conversations when he was speaking to me internally. God is trying to equip us. He had to get Elijah to quit running. He's trying to do the same to us. We've got to quit running. 
we've got to quit running from the chaos and we've got to also quit allowing the chaos to dictate to our life what are you talking about we get so wrapped up in what the news is going on man we lose all our peace we 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 get to the point where how many of you have ever got worked up watching the news i can tell you man it wasn't the spirit of god i was feeling and i'm thinking i've got to quit allowing this to dominate my life and i need to get to my quiet place you know what happens when you get to the quiet place you'll walk out and look, look up at a giant and say i ain't fighting you my daddy is <laughs> You say, this ain't about me, this is about God. You may be big and impressive, but you can't, you, you, can't, you, you can't stand against my God. Goliath said, come on out here, boy, I'm going to feed you to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the earth. And he looked at him, David looked up at him. Goliath called him just a boy, just a child. And David looked up at him. Why is he able to do that? Because he'd been in a quiet place. He'd been on a hillside with God, taking out lions and bears. He'd already been there. He said, you don't impress me. And he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. And this day he'll deliver you into my hand I've been to my quiet place I'm ready for war are you ready just stretch your hand let's let, I want you to do something for me right now if you would uh, for all that can if, if you can move to the front move to the front if you can't just slip your hands up where you're at and for a moment I want you to get quiet Usually, when it gets quiet in church, folks get nervous. Sometimes we want to whip everybody up. <laughs> you know, I've just always been concerned about being real with God. I remember telling God when I was getting ready to quit the job and go on the road full time, I said, God, I don't ever want this to be a job. Because I know people that do a job every day and they hate it. This is about a relationship. And that relationship's got to stay true. And it got, it's got to stay real. Or I'll become ineffective. I don't want to be a relic. I don't want to be talking about the good old days. Because I believe that the best is still yet to come. Yes. Sometimes you got to get quiet. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody say, set still a second. Motor, you can shut it off. What I've learned that helps me is standing in his presence see when I sit at a fireside and I'm looking up at night I realize that I'm in God's amphitheater when I am up in a deer stand and watching the sun rise I know it may sound odd to you but it brings me close to him standing at the foot of a mountain and looking at his handiwork how could I question if there's a God and so he speaks through those things and if you listen you'll hear him speak to you so as you stretch your hands to heaven with me right now I just want us I just want us let's not sing yet but just keep playing and even the praise and worship team you know your your jobs are very important because every Sunday and I want you to know how much we appreciate you as a church don't we church because you help carry us into the presence of God but if you come in this building and there's confusion in your heart and there's chaos in your mind you're going to struggle finding your way to him 
And it's by you finding your way to him that opens up a door for us to find our way in. I understand something about praise and worship. I may not be a great singer, but I understand what it does. So as you just stretch those hands up and we get quiet, you say it, here I am, God. Your servant. Speak to me. Nudge my heart. Whisper my name. Get in the very fiber of my soul and take me where I've never been before. Today, we cancel the confusion. We cancel the chaos. And we say, equip us for the battle. Go ahead and begin to sing if you would now. My heart has been in your sights long before my first breath running into your arms it's running to life from death i feel this rush deep in my chest your mercy is calling out just as i find your quiet place you're going to intentionally get still before God God is going to begin to speak to you in a way that you've not experienced yet the things that stand before us that, that that's still to come God is saying I want to equip you I want to empower you I don't want you nervous. I don't want you moved by noise or chaos. I need you to be a stronghold. Be a solid rock. Be an anchor. And the reason we can be is because he is being one for us. Here we are, God. Mm. We praise you for it right now. I want you to be ready for the months to come. I want you to understand that none of this is taking me by surprise. That I have ordained and I have planned and I have orchestrated. And you will play your part and you will be my voice. I will use your hand. I will use your feet. I will use your voice to speak peace to others. We thank you for it, Father, right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, sing it. My heart has been in your sights long before my
today, I want you to take somebody by the hand and just say, God is equipping us, preparing us for the ride of our life. <laughs> Come on and give my hand clap of praise in this house. We love you today. God bless you. Walk in his strength.